In this video, I'm going through S1, Chapter 7, Section 7.1, and we're introducing the normal distribution. So I have put a normal distribution that is looking at the average height. And what the normal distribution is used for, it's used for finding probabilities um, of certain events. And the normal distribution assumes or uh, needs the data to be symmetrical. That means that on average, on the whole, we expect to see very few very short people. We expect to see very few very tall people. And most people are around the average. So the mean of the data is um, in the middle and cuts the bell shape um, in two. So half the data is above the mean and half the data is below the mean. The properties of a normal distribution are as follows. Firstly, it is a bell shape. That's what they call this type of curve. Secondly, it's symmetrical. In fact, if the data is not symmetrical, then the normal distribution is not a suitable model for the data. The normal distribution is used for data that is symmetrical. The mean, the median, and the mode all lie on the line of symmetry. And the line of symmetry shows you what the mean is. We are interested in the mean. In fact, the axis of symmetry in a normal distribution passes through the mean. That means that um, the normal distribution can shift. So if you can see here the pink normal distribution, the mean is 5, because the line of symmetry is at 5. Um, the blue normal distribution shifts across the x-axis, but it's always symmetrical, so it can be here, or I can shift it if the mean is different, and it can move along the x-axis, but it will always be symmetrical, and the axis of symmetry passes through the mean. The width of the curve shows how spread out it is. Basically, a smaller variance will squash the distribution and make it closer to the mean. So if I put my symmetry line here, let's go, oh, there we are, so symmetry line is by the mean. So if I put my symmetry line here, you can see that most of the data is um, one unit away from the mean. Um, but a more spread out data, like this one here, it's definitely two units away from the mean. So um, a bigger variance squashes um, or flattens the normal distribution and a smaller variance squashes it and means that the values are closer to the mean. A normal distribution is a continuous distribution. It's used for continuous um, variables, not for discrete variables. So something like length or weight is continuous, but something like dress size is discrete. So the normal distribution is for continuous data. Probabilities are given by the area under the curve. So the area under the curve equals 1, because you can't have probabilities bigger than 1. If x is a continuous random variable, for example length, and it's distributed normally, it's symmetrical data, we write this as x is distributed, so that little symbol means is distributed, n for normally, x is distributed normally, and then we give the population mean, which is mu, the letter mu, and the variance with, of course, the letter, letter sigma, sigma squared being the variance, and sigma on its own is the standard deviation. So we always write what the mean is and what the variance is, and it's the population mean. Now you know 
uh, that the mean can be called x bar, but x bar is the sample mean, not um, the population mean. Now, the normal distribution has points of inflection, points where something kind of radical is happening. There's a, a big growth or a big turn, um, big decay or big growth. And the point of inflection happens um, visually there. They will always happen visually approximately there. But there means that they happen one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. So that's important to remember. The points of inflections, they happen one standard deviation above or below the mean. The other th things you need to learn, and I might just put that and say learn, is that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So you can see here the mean is 5.5, the standard deviation is 0 0.5, and 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the data always lies two standard deviations from the mean, and 99.7% of the data lies within three standard deviations from the mean. So if you're asked to sketch a normal distribution curve, you really only need to label three standard deviations away from the mean. I mean, you can, you can label four or five, but 99.7% of the data um, is three standard deviations from the mean. Now, it says, although a normal random variable could take any value, in practice, observations a long way away from the mean have probabilities very close to zero. They're not impossible, they're not zero, but they are close to zero. So, here I've got 99.7%. These data here, these blue bits, have very, very, very small uh, very, very small probabilities. So if I go back here, the probability of meeting or knowing or seeing a very, very, very short person is very, very, very unlikely. They do exist, but it's very, very unlikely um, that um, we will see them, we will come across them, or they are just such a small minority of the population. Um, I've put this video, which is quite good, that's where I got these um, these diagrams from. Do have a watch as well. I've also put what the textbook says, which I have tr summarized at the top. So it pretty much says um, the same thing. This here shows that um, histograms often show a normal distribution and the more you reduce the width of the histograms the more bell-shaped bell curves they become for a symmetrical distribution of course um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a few examples so the diameters of a metal pin produced by a particular machine x millimeter are modeled as x is distributed normally and this is mu the mean and this is the standard deviation and of course squared makes it the variance and it says find the probability that x is bigger than 8 well 8 is the population mean so if i sketch the um, normal distribution 8 literally is the mean and we've said before that the mean is the line of symmetry so it cuts the bell curve in two so half is the probability that the um, that the variable is going to be bigger than eight and the other half that it's going to be smaller so the probability here 
is 0 0.5. It's, it's a half. Now the second one says what's the probability that x is going to be bigger than 7.8 and smaller than 8.2? Well, look at your standard deviation. It's going up or down by 0 0.2. So this is going to be 8.2 and this is going to be 7.8 and here is one standard deviation above or below the mean and we know that this is 68%. So the area under the curve that is uh, one standard deviation above and below the mean is 68%. So the probability that our variable is going to be in this area is 0 0.68. The second question is an exam question and it is um, from exercise 7a and question 9. And it says the diagram shows the distribution of height in centimetre of barn owls in the UK. It is noticed that the distribution is approximately normal. State the value of the mean height. Well, the mean is where the line of symmetry is. So it is around there, approximately 36 centimetres. And then it says estimate the standard deviation of the heights. And you can do it kind of from the diagram. You can say, well, the point of inflection is about here, just by sight, and here, and this gives me about 38, this gives me about 34, and it looks like the variance, uh, the standard deviation is two units because it takes me from the mean. Um, so points of inflection happen mean plus one standard deviation or mean minus one standard deviation. And it looks like that is a unit of two. The standard deviation is two. But I think that there's also another way of doing this. And we know that to be one standard deviation away from the mean covers an area of 68%. So I want to know what's my kind of total frequency here. How many data points have I got? And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And I'm going to find out where. 0.68 times 14, where the 68% uh, value is. So 68% of 14 is 9.52. I'm going to approximate that to the 10th value. And I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's actually taking me here. But I know it's not quite the 10th value. I know it's 9.52. So it's going to be there and it's going to be there and maybe the points of inflections um, nope it's not going to be there it's going to be um, here points of inflections are going to be there and a better estimate in that case not just doing it visually, a better estimate would be between two to three centimeters. So the standard deviation, one standard deviation is between two and three centimeters. And finally, question seven says, the masses of the sheep m kilograms on a farm are modeled as m is distributed normally with a mean of mu and variance. If 84% of the sheep weigh more than 52 kilograms and 97.5% of the sheep weigh more than 47.5 kilograms, find the value of the mean and the variance. Now. 84% weigh more than 52 kilograms. Well, how much weigh less than that? 
minus 84% is 16%. And 16% is one of these important numbers, and I'll show you why. In a normal distribution, I know that this is the mean, and that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation above or below the mean. Well, let's do 100% minus 68%. That gives us 32%. So the leftover is 32. But the leftover, look, is bigger than um, the first standard deviation and smaller than. So it's actually divided into two areas. So if I divide by 2, that gives me 16%. So actually, 16%, which is a number I'm interested in, lie below um, the mean minus one standard deviation. So 52 equals the mean minus one standard deviation because I know that less than is 16% and this 16% is below that, is also my less than. And let's look at the next part. The next part says 97.5% weigh more than 47.5%. Well, let's do some calculations to find what's left over. 100% minus 97.5% is 2.5%. Um, and again, 2.5% should be a number that you recognize, and I'll show you why. If we have a normal distribution, and I have the mean, I know that I've got my 60%, 68%, one standard deviation away from the mean, but I also know that 95% lie uh, within two standard deviations of the mean, two standard deviations of the mean. So again, a simple calculation, 100% minus 95%, gives me 5%, but this 5% is split into two regions, two areas. And so 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%. And that's my less than. Therefore, 47.5 equals the mean minus two standard deviations. It's this area that I'm interested in, the less than area. So, I now have two equations, and these two equations I can solve simultaneously very easily. It's actually that bit that takes uh, a bit of getting your head around, but the, the next part is pretty straightforward. So equals mu minus sigma and 47.5 equals mu minus 2 sigma. Um, same sign subtract. So that's gone minus uh, sigma minus minus 2 sigma means minus sigma plus 2 sigma, which is a positive sigma. And then 52 minus 47 0.5 gives us 4.5, and I need to write it properly. Okay, and once I have um, the standard deviation, I can substitute it in. So 52 equals mu minus 4.5. So I'm going to add 52 to the 4.5, and I get mu is 56. So M is distributed normally, 56.5, 4.5 squared. That's how you would write your normal distribution. 
And that is section 7.1, just getting your head around these figures, the shape, the properties of um, the normal distribution.